สวัสดีครับ Welcome to Thailand at large. Today you're traveling with me, w a c h a r a s w a i s a n y a g o n The border area between the northeast of Thailand and northern Cambodia is full of cultural and historical intrigues. So today we've traveled to Surin Province, one of the provinces in the Lower e s a n region. This place holds stories that date back over a thousand years. But what do these stories entail? Well, let's start our journey today and find out. Phnom d o n g r a k the natural barrier, was designated as the borderline between Thailand's northeastern region and Cambodia's northern region in the era when nation-states came into existence over the past century. For the past millennia, numerous passes in Phnom Dong Rak Range functioned as communication routes between residents in lowlands of Cambodia, with those on highlands to the south of Thailand's northeastern region. Today, certain traditional passes of Phnom Dong Rak Range remain in use as communication routes, and some have been developed as important checkpoints in Thai-Cambodian border trade. บริเวณที่เราอยู่ณตรงนี้นะคะก็คืออยู่ในเขตของเทือกเขาพนมดงรักนะคะซึ่งพบว่าเป็นบริเวณที่เป็นเส้นกั้นระหว่างชายแดนนะคะประเทศไทยแล้วก็กัมพูชานะคะเราพบว่ามีการติดต่อระหว่างคนนะคะสองดินแดนนี้เนี่ยมาตั้งแต่สมัยก่อนประวัติศาสตร์แล้วนะคะอย่างบริเวณจังหวัดสุรินทร์เนี่ยก็จะมีช่องเขาที่สําคัญที่ใช้ในการติดต่อคือจะเป็นช่องเขาตาเมือนนะคะที่เราอยู่นะคะแล้วก็ที่ช่องจอมนะคะแล้วก็ถ้าเป็นหลักฐานที่สําคัญที่เห็นอย่างชัดเจนนะคะก็คือจะเป็นเส้นทางสมัยโบราณที่เรียกว่าราชมัคคาช่องตาเมือน in Phnom d o n g r a k District, Surin Province, was one of the significant passes in ancient times. Here, archaeological sites dating back a millennia are located, re-emphasizing the importance of this communication route, which connected the political and administrative center at Angkor in the present-day Cambodia with large communities in Thailand's northeast, such as Phnom r u n g and p h m a i This area is part of the line that separates the two countries of Thailand and Cambodia, and a small track just down there in front of me actually leads into crossing into Cambodia itself. The Thailand-Cambodia border line, which measures 798 kilometers in total, lies the location of at least four ancient sacred sites. One of which is Prasat Ta m u n t h o m or Ta m u n t h o m Sanctuary, which is where I am right now. p r a s a t t a m u n t h o m is a large sanctuary built of sandstone and laterite, with the layout in square shape. The sanctuary is orientated towards the south, unlike others which normally face the east. This was meant to be aligned with the path from Angkor through t a m u n Pass. The periphery of the sanctuary is marked by surrounding balconies with arched entrances. Built of sandstone on all four sides, the presiding spire of the sanctuary is on a large square layout. The sanctuary itself has four directional entrances, each divided into three bays. สำหรับปราสาทแห่งนี้นะคะจริงๆแล้วเนี่ยเพราะว่ามีการใช้งานมาตั้งแต่พุทธศตวรรษที่12นะคะปัจจุบันนี้คือพุทธศตวรรษที่26นะคะเพราะฉะนั้นก็ประมาณสัก 1,400 ปีมาแล้วนะคะถ้าเราไปข้างในเนี่ยจะเห็นหลักฐานของพื้นที่แกะสลักนะคะก็คืออาจจะใช้เป็นศาสนาสถานมาก่อนนะคะแต่ตัวอาคารหลักที่เราเห็นนี้นะคะจริงๆแล้วก็คือสร้างในช่วงของประมาณพุทธศตวรรษที่16นะคะก็คือประมาณ 1,000 ปีมาแล้วนะคะโดยสร้างขึ้นเนี่ยเพื่ออุทิศแก่<laughs> Enshrined in the center hall of the presiding spire is the Shiva Lingam, the symbol of Shiva, the supreme being of Shaivite Hinduism. This special lingam is a natural creation of sandstone slab called Savayam p u v a Lingam, which is considered the most sacred and of the greatest importance to Shaivism. จริงๆซีวลึงก็คือเป็นตัวแทนของพระศิวะนะคะก็อยู่ในรูปของอวัยวะเพศชายเพราะว่าถือเป็นแหล่งกําเนิดสิ่งมีชีวิต
ทุกทุกสิ่งในโลกในจักรวาลน,นะคะสิวดวงเนี่ยจะมีหลายแบบด้วยกันนะคะไม่ว่าทําจากหินนะคะทําจากอัญมณีนะคะหรือว่าเมล็ดของพืชนะคะก็ถือว่าเป็นสิวลึงแบบหนึ่งนะคะแต่ว่าสิวดวงที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์ที่สุดนะคะคือสิวดวงที่เกิดขึ้นเองตามธรรมชาติ There are two satellite towers built of sandstone set to the back one to the left and the other to the right of the main spire on a square layout With an arch gate for entrance and exit on the south. Prasad t a m u n t o m remained in continuous use for several hundred years, as evidenced by two banalai, or libraries, built of laterite in the 13th century AD. Around the 13th century AD. In the reign of King Jayavarman VII of the Khmer Empire, t a m u e n Pass became a part of the royal roads network, comprising five roads built to connect the capital Angkor with various important cities around the empire. Of the five royal roads, the longest one, spanning about 254 kilometers, was the route from Angkor Thom. Heading north to the city of p i m a i the location of Prasad p i m a i a major stone sanctuary in the present-day Nakhon Ratchasima Province in Thailand. เส้นทางที่ชัดเจนคือสมัยพระเจ้าชัยมาที่7นะคะสมัยเขมรน,นะคะหลักทางนี้เนี่ยมันจะเป็นเส้นทางระหว่างเมืองพระนครนะคะแล้วก็จะตัดตรงมาทางเมืองพิมายนะคะซึ่งเป็นดินแดนซึ่งสมัยนั้นเนี่ยก็คือเหมือนกับได้รับอิทธิพลหรือว่าอยู่ในความดูแลของกันและกันเนี่ยนะคะก็คือพิมายเนี่ยก็จะคือแคว้นของมหิทลาปุระ In the era of King Jayavarman VII, there was also the construction of two other sacred sites in the vicinity of Prasad t a m u n t o m What connection or significance they had in relation to the royal roads? That's the next thing we're going to find out. Located about 750 meters from Prasad t a m u n t o m is Prasad t a m u n t o t This laterite sanctuary is surrounded by walls, with a small water pond on the north. This was one of the 102 structures put up at the command of King Jayavarman VII as the a r o g y a s h a l a or hospitals in communities along with the major communication routes. พระเจ้าชัยมันที่เจ็ดเนี่ยท่านเป็นมหาราชวงสุดท้ายของอาจักขเมรนะคะท่านมีความเชื่อในเรื่องของศาสนาพุทธนิกายมหายานนะคะเดิมกษัตริย์กษัตริย์ขเมรองค์ก่อนเนี่ยจะเชื่อในศาสนาฮินดูนะคะแต่พระองค์ก็เปลี่ยนมานับถือศาสนาพุทธมหายานนะคะซึ่งพระองค์ก็เปรียบกับตุกตัวเองเป็นพระโพธิสัตว์นะคะท่านอยากจะให้ประชาชนเนี่ยมีความพ้นทุกข์จากโรคภัยต่างๆนะคะท่านก็เลยได้สร้างโรงพยาบาลทั่วดินแดนของท่านนะคะซึ่งที่ตาเมืองโต๊ดเนี่ยนะคะก็ถือว่าเป็นอาโรคยาสารที่มีความสมบูรณ์ที่สุดแห่งหนึ่งของประเทศไทยนะคะเนื่องจากรูปแบบและแผนผังต่างๆ about 390 meters From Prasad t a m u n t o t is another prasad, which is of smaller size, but with great significance. Prasad t a m u n is the rest house with fire for travelers, called by the French archaeologist Louis f i n o as Damasala. The unique architectural style of Damasala is its structure as a single building, built of laterite or sandstone. Orientated towards the east, with window openings on the wall to the south only. ตาเมืองนะคะก็จะอีกชื่อหนึ่งคือปราสาทใบกรีนนะคะใบกรีนแปลว่าข้าวแห้งนะคะอันนั้นจะเป็นเรียกว่าธรรมศาลาสร้างขึ้นในสมัยพระเจ้าชัยวมันที่7เหมือนกันนะคะตามจะลึกของปราสาทพระขันนะคะกล่าวว่าท่านได้สร้างเอาไว้รอบอาณาจักรเนี่ยประมาณ121แห่งนะคะในประเทศมีอยู่ในประเทศไทย17แห่งซึ่งขณะนี้ก็ค้นพบหมดแล้วนะคะใช้เป็นที่พักคนเดินทางแต่จากจาลึกเนี่ยจะเรียกธรรมศาลาเนี่ยว่าวาหานิคะลึหะหรือว่าบ้านพักที่มีไฟ
It is quite astonishing that the ancient Khmer Empire had such a systematic intercity communication network, on par with great empires of the world in ancient times, such as the Romans with Roman roads, or China with Silk Road, for effective control of towns and conduct of trade. In the past, this was definitely an essential route of the region, although it gradually faded in significance with the collapse of the ancient Khmer Empire. But Prasad Tamun Group remained evidence of the past glory in culture and trade among ancient communities. With this mountain pass as the link that brings residents on both sides of Pranom Dongrak together in close and intimate ties. The purpose of visiting and studying these ancient sites isn't to admire the beauty in architecture. What can be drawn from this, and definitely shouldn't be overlooked, is the study of social dimension and intercultural relations between peoples through the ages, something which I believe can help expand our horizons beyond expectation. Surin province is the habitat of several ethnic groups, mainly Khmer, Lao and Gui, resulting in interesting mix of diverse cultures. Also, with Cambodia as next-door neighbour, trade with cultural exchanges have been conducted since ancient times. Surin has a long tradition of silk weaving, which has given it a unique identity that's different from the other silk weaving destinations of Thailand. So today, I've come to the Ban Jeroy village to have a look at the exquisite silk that they make here, and I have some local ladies who will be my enthusiastic guides. Sadiqa. Surin is a part of the South Isan, which has long made names in silk production from way back in history. At present, this area remains one of the largest silk production sites of Thailand. Today, villagers at Ban Jarui bring silk textile that they have woven themselves to show with pride. Each piece has been elaborately woven and decorated with ancient patterns, using natural dyes for the yarns, which require special skills in weaving, a part of Khmer culture in Thailand. These silk textiles are called differently in accordance with weaving patterns used, such as this piece, called non-leg pattern. This one is called si ye, or dok rik pattern, very delicate in weaving. Nok yung pi fao pattern is what everyone says is more difficult in weaving than all the other patterns. Ho, a traditional pattern regarded as the identity of matmi silk of Surin province. Nakgyo pattern is also more difficult and time-consuming in weaving than other patterns. And this is Ambrom, another ancient weaving pattern of the ethnic Khmer, only found in South Isan of Thailand. Apart from ancient patterns, villages of Banjarui also weave textiles in numerous various patterns, such as Pratu Wang, Palace Gate, Lang Tao, Turtle Back, Ton Son, Pine Tree, Sakon Nakon, Dog Pikun, Bullet Wood Flower, and these are the male and female sarongs. Prices of these hand-woven silk are set at 1,500 to 2,000 baht a piece, certainly more costly than other materials. But if you look at the steps involved in the production, from the rearing of silk worms to obtaining silk yarns for dyeing, before weaving them on the loom, which takes months for a piece of material, also, each piece reflects unique identity and civilization in the ancient craft of weaving. With such elaboration and perseverance required in weaving one piece of silk, 
the set prices might even be too low. Now that I'm in the land of silk, people here want me to get dressed in local garment made of their silk textiles. Certainly, this is a good opportunity for me to experience a part of local culture more intimately. Not just silk textiles, but here at Banjarui, I had the opportunity to learn about folk culture related to the people day-to-day -day living. While women use their spare time in silk weaving, men form groups to make basketry for daily life. What I'm interested in is the making of fish traps from simple wisdom, but with amazingly good results. I see, I see. So it's quite a genius apparatus. You wouldn't know from the look of it how to use it, but it's quite simple. You drop this into a field or, you know, any body of water that will have, you know, whatever you want to catch. In this case, it would be either fish, toad or frog. Put this in, whatever you want to catch will enter through here and it will be locked in in this bit here. And you'll see that in the middle part, it's, you know, all the straws are pointing together so it can't go out. But when you want to let it out again, there's a little hatch here that you can open and lock, of course, when you know, you're catching it. So when you want to release it, you can open this part. And when the frog or the fish goes in, it goes in through this gap here, like so. And that's how it gets caught. It can only go in one way, but not the other. Uh, just like my hand, okay. Uh, yeah, it's quite sharp. So, you know, when you pull your hand out, be careful because it's a bit tricky, but that's how you get your fish slash toad slash frog for your delicious local meal. Cup. And now, our lunch is here. I don't want to tell you that what we have in here is our food today. Well, you just saw what this thing does and how to catch frogs with them, but what do you do with what you've caught? Well, we're gonna uh, have a look at the local delicacy here because a local trip isn't complete without seeing a local dish. So, we've got frogs in here, very alive and kicking, but um, we're going to skip the step of, uh, you know, killing them and we're going to go to how to make a local dish called gebo, which translates to... Gebo. <laughs> which translates to stuffed frog. Our menu today in Khmer is Angkep Bob, literally grilled stuffed frog. Spices used are lemongrass, red onion, dry chili, holy basil leaf, grated coconut meat, ginger, finger root, and garlic. Indispensable is the skinned frog without the heads and legs and the inside discarded, then thoroughly cleansed. The remaining frog has a hollow hole as we see it. The cut-off legs are finely chopped and mixed with spices. Herbs and spices are cut in small pieces and pounded roughly together. Then chopped frog meat is put in and pounded with spices. Now we come to the important step, stuffing the well-pounded chopped frog meat and spices into the prepared frog using this tool. The vacuum tube sends the stuffing into the hollowed frog until it is full and rounded, as we see here. Then the stuffed frog is skewered with bamboo stick, each holding two frogs. Okay, the final step before we can eat this deliciousness is cooking it, of course. So we're going to grill these stuffed frogs. The grilling of stuffed frog needs patience because it is grilled on charcoal stove with low fire so that frog meat inside is thoroughly cooked. 
On average, each grilling takes about half an hour. And now, the awaiting moment arrives. I must admit that the odor of stuffed frog with spices has got me suddenly craving for food. Okay, moment of truth. What do stuffed frogs taste like? Baby chicken, baby chicken. Just think in my head. There's a lot of crunch to it. That's the first thing I noticed. And it's the bones, yeah. It's like the really chopped up bones. Well, before we leave Banjaroy village, the local ladies are kind enough to offer me a meal before I go. But what I didn't expect was a full feast. I mean, look at this. And I think I know the secret of their longevity because this is all very healthy foods. Uh, how much is the price? 89 years old. And how much is the price? 80. See, everyone in their late 80s or early 80s and are still going strong. And you can see that they eat a lot of lean meats, fresh vegetables, and very healthy dishes. None of them have any preservatives or any artificial um, addition additionals at all. Uh, let's go over what we're eating here. This is a very um, local dish, very true to Serin, which is called Gang Glue. And it's called Walin. That's the local name. <laughs> and this is the frog that I tried earlier that we were grilling. <laughs> Stuffed frog. Yeah, very good. Gabob. <laughs> see, that's what they call it here. Okay, see. Uh, long yard beans. We've got some uh, steamed fish with a chili and steamed fish uh, dip. Also, Namphik Patu Para. Uh, mackerel with fermented fish and kanom jean noodles that will go with that. So as you can see, all very healthy and delicious. Okay, and before we start eating, of course, we can't go without rice. And we actually have two very special kinds of rice here. The first kind, which is what you see very commonly in Thailand, is khao hom mali, very famous. And it's actually originally from this part of Thailand, from the lower Isan region. So it's very special. And for an even more healthy option, we've got brown rice or rice berry. So, if you'll excuse me, I think I'm gonna dig in. Bon appetit. I take leave from Banjaroy with deep impression of ancient local tradition of wrapping visitors' waists with cloths. Blessings from elders who tie my wrist with holy white threads for auspices while telling me repeatedly to be fortunate and most importantly, not to forget coming back to Banjaroy again. I promised them that I would definitely come back to visit this village one day. Accumulation of knowledge that has been passed on from one generation to the next. So it is with hope that they remain to exist and not vanish through the changes that come from the modernization of the world. Well, that's all the time we have for Thailand at large for today. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time for another fun and educational trip together. For now though, สวัสดีครับ. <laughs>